Stay tuned for the following special presentation from KOFO, 1220 and 103.7 FM. KOFO, your sports source for East Central Kansas. Now on 103.7 FM, welcomes you to the Ottawa University Braves Wise Guys Construction Pregame Show. Whether it's residential, commercial, or restoration construction you need, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa at 785-229-5651. Now for a preview of this OU Brave sports broadcast, let's join KOFO's David Potter. And welcome to Salina. I'm David Potter with KOFO Sports here to bring you OU basketball. We've got the OU Braves with the ready to stand off against the Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes. It's the uh, five and two Braves off to a two and zero start in KCAC play against the Coyotes four and four overall record one and one in KCAC play so still early on still a lot to learn about both these teams and really every team in the conference so far we'll take a look at Kansas Wesleyan first who was uh, not afraid to challenge themselves in the non-conference schedule starting themselves off with two games against top 10 opponents they went to play at number seven ranked College of the Ozarks to start things off and lost that one 90 to 72, but then played a tough Morningside College team on November 1st, ranked fourth in the country at that time. Lost by only seven, 74 to 70, yeah, 74 to 67. So very competitive with a tough team there. And then after a win over uh, Bacon College, they were playing the 25th ranked Haskell Indian Nations University out of Lawrence and won that game, 65-59. So this is a team that's not afraid to play anybody and has been very competitive and even had the one win over a, a top 25 ranked team. So Kansas Wesleyan certainly not, uh, not going to back down from a fight. And it all starts with Jenna Ferris, who's the leading scorer involved in tonight's game. She averages 17.6 points per game. John has attempted a team-high 56 three-pointers this season, made 18 of them. That's just a 32% rate, but she's still not afraid to let it fly, shooting 39% overall from the floor, averaging just under or just over 28 minutes a game. And that's one thing that you'll notice about Wesley and tonight is that they do spread their minutes out a little more than the Braves do. The Braves have three players averaging over three minutes, 30 minutes a night. Wesleyan doesn't have a single one. Jenna Ferris leading the team in minutes at 28.4 per game and then also in points, 17.6. And another thing that you'll notice is that I mentioned her three-point shooting, 18 to 56. They're not afraid to let it fly from behind the arc, but so far have not found success there this season, shooting just 31% on their 165 attempts. So they put it up uh, just over, just, just short of 21 times per game from the perimeter but have not found a lot of success hitting the uh, bottom of the net there. Again, just 31%, but making about 39% of their shots overall. So they've been effective from two-point range, despite not having quite as much height as, say, the this Braves team does. Their top three-point shooter is uh, Carly Steinle, who's also their second-leading scorer. She averages 12.5 points a game. She's hitting 11 of 28 from outside the arc. That's 39%, a very respectable rate. Also an excellent free-throw shooter, hitting 83% of those. She's the only other Coyote other than Ferris who averages double digits this season so far. So those will be the two scorers whose names you'll hear the most. Also, the two leading rebounders on the team. Well, actually, second and third, Mariah Knox is actually the leading rebounder at 5.6 rebounds a game, but Ferris is finally averaging 5 and 5.1, so they're all just about right there with each other. And uh, Maria Knox, the only six-footer on the team, or actually, there are there are two, but uh, the second one, Taryn Frazier, not uh, frequently used. Knox is the only starter and, and uh, player who averages a lot of minutes, getting about 17 and a half per contest, who is, does stand at six feet. And of course, 
Ottawa has the reigning KCAC Player of the Week and Ashley Romig, who stands six feet tall on the other side of the court. So that'll be an interesting matchup to watch as the night goes on. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more of the Wise Guys halftime, or excuse me, Wise Guys pregame show here on KOFO Sports. Anyone can call themselves a construction company, slap a sign on the side of their truck, and drive around town looking for work. Is that who you want to hire? No, you're smarter than that. Wise Guys Construction at 108 North Main in Ottawa has been in business for 13 years, building new residential homes, adding additions and finishing basements, solving commercial structure needs for businesses, and repairing damage left behind from fire or water. When it comes to who you hire for residential and commercial construction needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction at 785-229-5651. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. And welcome back to Salina. Once again, I'm David Potter with KOFO bringing you the Wise Guys Construction pregame show. We're about eight minutes from tip-off here as the OU women's basketball team set to start off the doubleheader against Kansas Wesleyan. Um, before the break, we told you a little about Wesleyan and, uh, and the, what their roster looks like. Now for the Braves, they're, again, 5-2 and two on the season, undefeated in KCAC play. They, like Wesleyan, were not afraid to start off with some tough teams. They went on the road and played Park University, won that one 70-64, but then turned right around and played a uh, top 15 ranked Baker University team. They weren't able to get the result they wanted out of that one, lost 81-70, but then turned around the very next day and played a ranked Benedictine College team, took them to overtime and won it 70-66. to To get them to a 2-1 start, they beat Avila in their next game. Then they would suffer their only other loss so far this season on November 12th against Midland University, 65-58. But so far in KCAC play, they've been dominant with an 83-66 home win over Southwestern, followed up by going on the road to play Bethany. They got a 17-point win there at 72-55. So, like I mentioned before the break, Ottawa does have three players that they lean on significantly, all averaging over 30 minutes a game. That's Maddie Stewart, who is one of just 14 OU Braves to have scored 1,000 points in her career. So she's going to be one to uh, – she'll be a name that you'll hear quite frequently tonight, averaging about 17 points a game so far, shooting 11 of 28 from behind the arc. That's 39%. You could probably afford to – but a few more fly from behind the perimeter at that rate. Kaylee Williams, another strong player for them, averaging 15 and a half points per game. Also 5.6 rebounds. Maddie Stewart, another good rebounder at 6.3, but of course the leading rebounder on the team is once again KCAC's reigning player of the week, Ashley Romig, the senior for Waverly. She gets about 27 minutes a game herself and averaging 14 points, 7.4 rebounds, but in this past week in their two games averaged 20 points, 8.5 boards. She got six blocks on the season. So she's she's six feet tall and she's a big part of the reason that the Braves don't shoot nearly as many threes as their opponents. The Braves have hoisted 88 shots from behind the arc. That's only about 24% of their total shots, which is not a high rate at all. Uh, but when you've got a dominant player inside like Romig is, you don't need to put it up from outside nearly as much, whereas Wesleyan, you'll see, puts it up from outside about 39% of their shots. So it's a very different look as far as offense is concerned. Jenna Kramer is also going to see a lot of minutes. She's averaging just under 10 points per game. And the team leader in assists with 16. And then you also see uh, or hear a lot of Kelsey Hendricks, Je- Jessica King, uh, both averaging about five points a game. They'll play a significant role on the team 
as well. One thing they'll have to watch a little bit is they have turned the ball over on about a quarter of their possessions so far this season. That's a little higher than Kansas Wesleyan's 21%, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. They'll need to take care of the ball in addition to uh, scoring. So we'll go ahead and take a break as they're preparing for the national anthem. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOF Sports. Bill Crowley, owner of Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa, on what sets them apart as your trusted source for residential and commercial construction. We're not a handyman service. We're a professional licensed construction company. We're not only licensed in Ottawa, with our license we can work anywhere. Which means? No matter what the project or where, you get a licensed contractor every time. We've been in business for 13 years. Our experience and customer service are what keeps us in business. Wise Guys Construction, 785-229-5651. They've given you encouragement, given you perspective, given you love when you needed it most. It's unthinkable that their generosity could be taken advantage of. Thanks to a new law in Kansas, financial abuse of an elder person is now a serious crime. If you or someone you know is being financially abused, you have the power to act. Call 1-800-922-5330 for help. Sponsored by Leading Age Kansas and the Department for Aging and Disability Services in cooperation with this station. an easy one. We'll go ahead and take one more break and then we'll be back with the tip-off here in Salina. You're listening to KOFO Sports. Thank you for listening to the Wise Guys Construction Braves Basketball Pregame Show. Tip-off is next on KOFO. Scott Schultz of Comfort Care Homes on the renovation of their facility in Ottawa completed by Wise Guys Construction. Bill and Jason managed the project. They basically handled all the external communication with all the different parties, and it was a very smooth process. I was extremely satisfied. We've received nothing but compliments on the home and just really glad to have them involved. But I think Wise Guys is one of the leading uh, construction firms in Ottawa. Be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction, 785-229-5651. KOFO, your sports source for East Central Kansas, welcomes you to this broadcast of Ottawa University Braves basketball. Brought to you by Modern Woodman agent Dale Pearson, Dr. Hale Family Dentistry, Kansas State Bank, Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, the Ottawa Recreation Commission, and by State Farm Insurance agent Ryan Dispro, Ransom Memorial Hospital, Sutton's Jewelry, Car Star, Messengers Home Furnishing. Also by Dingle and Sun Mortuary, Ottawa University, Eminence Sports Shop, The Ottawa Herald, Wise Guys Construction, Kramer Pharmacy, Franklin County Chiropractic, and Cosentino's Price Chopper, State Farm Insurance Agent Keith King, Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, and People's Bank. 
Now, let's rejoin KOFO's David Potter, courtside, for Ottawa University Braves basketball. And welcome back to Salina once again. I'm David Potter with KOFO Sports, bringing you OU basketball. They just announced the starting lineups, and we are preparing for tip-off. As you look at the two teams on paper, one thing that you'll notice is that Wesleyan can put up good point totals, but they're not nearly as efficient as the Ottawa has been. They're shooting 39% overall on the year end, 31% from three-point range, whereas the Braves shooting 42% overall, 34% from three-point range. Braves with a 46% effective field goal percentage, Wesleyan is 45. So more efficient scoring look for the Braves as we will see Romig and Sidney Mortensen ready to Romig and Knox if she's going to tip this one off. And Knox tips it back to her point guard, Jenna Ferris, and the Coyotes will start the game with the ball, and we've already got a whistle. Looks like we might have had the game, start, game clock start a little early. They'll put two seconds back on. So Wesleyan will throw it in and the referees get the clock situation straightened out. Throw in to Knox and right back to Steinle. Driven to the top of the key and we're having more clock issues to stop the game again. So some technical difficulties here and Salina to start things off. Apparently that time the clock did not start, whereas the first time they started it too quickly. So hopefully this time we'll find a happy medium and meet in the middle. We can play some basketball. They're just going to reset it to 9.54, which is where it was before they threw it in, and they'll do the throw in once, a, once more instead of trying to Short the clock situation out. So once again, Steinle to throw it in. She finds Knox, who once again hands it right back to Steinle. She dribbles it up to the top of the key, passes it out to the wing. Jenna Ferris, looking for where to go, gets it out to the top of the key to New. New out on the wing to Knox. Knox works it inside. A nice move, gets the assist. And Jenna Ferris gets the easy layup. Now Kaylee Williams sends it over to Kelsey Hendricks to take it down the court. Defended by Briley New for a player. She gets it into the corner. A leaping catch by Jenna Kramer. Kramer gets up to the top of the key. They work it into the post to Rormig, who couldn't handle it, had to try and save it, but gets into the hands of a Wesleyan player. And Wesleyan's on the move, trying to take it down the other way. Up to nothing early. New with the ball out on the right wing. Now driving. Finds an open shooter on the wing. No good from three-point range. Rebound to Rormig. We'll get it out to Kelsey Hendricks. Hendricks wants to take it all the way. Now she'll dump it off to the side. And a nice drive, but couldn't quite finish. Kaylee Williams there. Now Braley New taking it back the other way for Kansas Wesleyan. And Jenna Ferris at the top of the key, looking for somewhere to go with it. To get it back out to New along the right wing. She'll get it to... Knox, who thought about taking a three-pointer from the corner, thought better of it. Now, with the shot clock running out, Knox is going to have to hoist up a three. It doesn't even hit the rim. Rebound goes to Maddie Stewart. Maddie Stewart looking to drive. Now, to go through some contact, can't make the shot, but she is fouled, and she'll go to the line for a pair. So Stewart... So just a brief hesitation move at the top of the key there and then drove it in and forced the foul on the part of Sidney Mortensen. First free throw is good and the Braves are on the board. 8.14 to go here in the first period. Down 2-1, Maddie Stewart take the second of two shots. It's up and in, 2-2. Two two. Wesleyan will bring it up the court. That's Briley New. Defended by Kaylee H or Kelsey Hendricks. No. There's Knox out on the wing, gets it to Rome to uh, 
Sydney Martinson who puts it up from three point range and does not fall. Here's Jenna Kramer. Almost has it stolen. Kaylee Williams able to regain control. And here's Kaylee Williams taking it to the basket and one. Lays it in with the left hand, draws the foul. And she'll go to the strive for a third point of opportunity. Fouls goes against Sydney Mortensen, so she picks up two quick ones. She's in immediate foul trouble, and she'll already be subbed out. The free throw is good. It's a 5-2 Braves lead. 7.49 to go here in the first quarter. Mortensen comes off. And that's Gabby Miller coming on, the 5'8 sophomore. Wesleyan bringing, brings it past half court. Here's Knox out on the wing. Despite being a six-footer, she doesn't spend much time in the post. She dumps it into the post. Now they kick it out to the corner, up for three, off the rim, high off the rim. They get the offensive rebound and able to lay it right back in. It's Steinle. Now if the Braves wanted to run, they'll take it down quickly, but Avenue shut off for Kaylee Williams. Gets it to the top of the key. Maddie Stewart over to Jenna Kramer. Kramer looking to dump it inside. Here's Romig. Up and under. No, but she gets her own board, puts it back up, and she's fouled. That'll be a third team foul already on Wesleyan. That one called against Mariah Knox, the top post player for Wesleyan. A little foul trouble earlier for the Coyotes. Is the first free throw is good, and that makes it 6-4. Roaming second free throw, swish, nothing but net, 7-4, OU Braves. Less than three minutes into the first quarter. Here's Riley New taking it to her left side. That's Jenna Ferris over to Steinle. Now finds New on the edge. She looks to kick it out. Now driving and looks like there's going to be a bump called before she went up for the layup. That was Jenna Ferris trying to take it to the basket. The foul on the on the floor called by against Kaylee Williams, their first. Bray's first team foul as well. Here's Jenna Ferris. Passing it over to New. Finds Gabby Miller. Miller looking to dump it inside. Nowhere to go. She's got a dribble. Can't get around. Maddie Stewart kicks it out to the corner. Pump fake gets to the lane and up and in. Carly Steinle with a nice move there. Faked out the defender. Got to the basket and laid it in. 7-6 Braves. Six and a half to go in the first quarter. Kelsey Hendricks setting things up at the top of the key. She'll get it over to Williams. Williams working. Goes drives to her left. Runs into the trees and loses her handle. Now going back the other way is Wesley and takes it coast to coast. Jenna Ferris got the steal and took it all the way down to take the lead for Wesley in 8-7. Now here's Romig up and under. Nice move. Not much you can do about that. Used the rim as protection against the block and rolled it off the glass and in. 9-8 for 8. Jenna Ferris picks up her dribble. Williams pressuring her. She'll dump it off to New. New trying to drive the baseline. She'll send it over to the corner. Kicks it out to the wing. Knox now over to Ferris who misses the three. But offensive rebound for Gabby Miller. Gabby Miller now passes it out to the wing. Where New will look for somewhere to go with it. He'll try to work it into Ferris. But it's stolen by Romig. Nice play. Now Hendricks. Takes it up, gets it over to Jenna Kramer. Over to Knox at the top of the key, who swings it over to Hendricks. Now here's Kaylee Williams, takes the three, drives, runs into the six-footer, and she drags her foot as she has to stop and try and redirect. It'll be a travel. The Braves give up possession. Be a quick substitution now. Is got Risha Parker entering the game for the Braves. New over to Miller, tries to work it in. Inside working against Jenna Kramer who gets the block. The ball goes out of bounds. A nice job by Kramer getting her hands up and blocking that shot. Steinle to throw it in for Wesley and underneath the basket. Barely beats the five-second count. Now up and missing is 
Gabby Miller. She just went right up with it. It went barely grazed the backboard. Went out of bounds with the last touch by a Braves. So another throw in underneath the basket. Shot clock down to seven for the Coyotes. Throw in, gets it to New. She launches it from way behind the line. She might have thought there was less time left than there was. Now Williams takes it over, throws passes to Parker on the fast break. Parker can't quite handle the pass, led her by a little too much. It goes out of bounds. Maddie Stewart comes out, and Jessica King comes in for OU. Here's New, looking left, finds Ferris, looking to dump it inside, she'll give up on that, drive, and picks it back out. Now they find an open shooter, it's Miller on the wing, nothing but air. Braves will take it back the other way, it's Kelsey Hendricks. Hendricks sets up a play. Pick it out to Jenna Kramer. Looking for somewhere to go with it. She'll get it to the top of the key. Leslie Spear out to Parker. And here's Jenna Kramer driving the baseline. She stepped out. They turn it over. He's hanging on to a 9-8 lead here. 3.56 to go in the first quarter. Heller will take it down for Kansas Wesleyan. Gets it out to the wing. Barely hung on to that pass as Sidney Morton playing with two fouls. Now they'll dump it inside, but mishandled and the steal by Leslie Spear. Now the ball mishandled by Parker. She can't pick up her dribble. Stolen by Wesleyan. They're going back the other way. And that's going to be a foul against Kaylee Williams. And that's going to be her second. So... Kaylee Williams for OU and Mortensen for Wesleyan already with two fouls apiece here in the first quarter. And Maddie Stewart is going to come on for Kaylee Williams. Sit in foul trouble. Sydney Mortensen to throw it in for Wesleyan. Gets it to Ashley Heller. Heller back out to Mortensen on the right wing. Now she'll get it to the top of the key to Ferris. Ferris back over to Mortensen, trying to work it inside. Here's Ashley Heller. She travels. So it'll be Braves ball into their own basket. 3.16 to go here in the first quarter. Braves up 9-8. It'll be Jessica King to throw it into. Point guard, Risha Parker. Parker gets a screen, moving to her left. Sends it over to Kramer. Now they work it inside to Jessica King. Looks like she got pushed a little bit. Couldn't quite haul it in. Now Wesley coming back the other way. The layup is missed. Offensive rebound. And the putback is good for Maddie Miller. Here's Kramer over to Parker. Parker has Maddie Stewart out on the left wing. Passes to the right, though. Now here's just Jenna Kramer inside to... Leslie Spear just found herself too far into the basket. She went up for the standing layup and couldn't reach back, and the ball ended up just hitting the bottom of the rim. Still 10-9, Wesleyan. Looking to work it inside. They'll off to the mid-range jump shot. It's short. Offensive rebound goes to Wesleyan. They kick it out for the open three. That one's good. That's their first three-point shot. And that's going to be a 30-second timeout for the Braves, and we'll take a 30-second timeout of our own. It's 13-9 Wesleyan. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO Sports. Since 1944, families of Franklin County have called Dingle & Son Mortuary and Crematory in their time of need. Why? Because of the peace of mind received knowing that Dingle & Son will take charge and exceed expectations. Visit DingleMortuary.com. When quality matters, choose the best. Choose Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling. Call today and make sure your heating and cooling system is ready for the season at 785-242-9273. Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, maintaining your comfort for over 30 years years sports information and entertainment in east central kansas kofok 279 cs ottawa where keeping you informed comes first and 
We are back in Salina where the Braves are only down 13-9 but being outshot. 17 attempts to just six. That's going to be an over-the-bat call against Jessica King. She went up for the offensive rebound, but directly over a Wesleyan player. 152 to go here in the first quarter, and the Braves put up two shot attempts there on that possession, but still 17 shot attempts by Wesleyan and just seven for the Braves, so that's got to be a little bit concerning. Wesleyan only one of eight from three-point range, so that's helped keep them off the board to some extent, but Braves will need to be a little more aggressive offensively. And they'll need to prevent those second chance opportunities. Wesleyan has six offensive rebounds so far, and there's two more points for Wesleyan, and that was Gabby Miller driving it in and putting it in with the left hand off the glass. 15-9 now, Coyotes over the Braves. Open shot. Good. Knocks down the three. That's Ashley Rome. The six-foot center showing some range at the top of the key. Makes it 15-12. Now Wesleyan driving in and one. That's Ashley Heller getting into the paint, getting it off the glass and in, and she draws the foul. That foul is going to be called again. Melanie Romig, the freshman. Is Williams getting it into Caitlin Hughes. Here's Williams from three. Oh, in and out. 18-12 Wesley, and we're under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Steinle taking it down for the Coyotes. Over to New. New kicks it back out to the top of the key. Steinle out to the corner now. Rotating on the perimeter, looking for an open lane to drive. Now they'll kick it out for three. Another miss, rebounded by the Braves. Here's Kelsey Hendricks taking it down for OU. Kick it over to Jessica King. Now here's Hendricks into Stewart. Pass out to the wing. Now driving the baseline is roaming, and she passes to no one. It's stolen. Eight seconds left. They're going to take it back the other way. They go up for the layup. And it's up and in. Three seconds left, two, one, and the Braves aren't going to have time to get a shot off. So after one quarter, Wesleyan out to a 12, 20 to 12 lead. We'll go ahead and take a break from Salina. You're listening to OU Sports on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. Safe. Secure. Strong. We're rock solid. Kansas State Bank. A better way to bank with community people you know. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. At State Farm, our goal is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This is State Farm agent Keith King in Ottawa. Let me help you protect what's most important to you. Give my office a call at 785-242-9435 or stop by at 111 South Main Street in Ottawa. Welcome back to Salina. We're ready for the second quarter. The Braves women's basketball team down 20-12. to 12. A big first quarter for Ashley Romig. Five points, four rebounds. But the Braves are trailing by eight. Here's the throw into Hendricks to start things off. Gets it over to Maddie Stewart. Swings it out to Caitlin Hughes. Hughes, nowhere to go. Gets it out to Stewart for three. Misses, but Romig oh, almost got the board. Wesleyan able to slap it away, and they've got the ball. Taking it down quick. Looking to get all the way to the rim. Goes up, draws the foul. The ball won't go in. And that was Carly Steinley. Foul called against Kelsey Hendricks. Steinley's got seven points on the night. Make it eight. 
He hits the first of two free throws. Second one is up and good. So she's got nine points already. Here's Chelsea Hendricks. A little bit of a full court trap run by Wesleyan there. Stewart into Romig, who can't quite finish, but she is able to draw the foul. So Romig will get two free throws now. Braves down double digits for the first time today. 22 to 12, 9.28 remaining here in the first half. Romig's first free throw, circles in. We're gonna see some substitution as Avery Lumen comes on for Kelsey Hendricks for OU. Avery Lumen and Catlin Hughes, the two guards in at the moment. Romig's second free throw is in. 22-14, she's got seven points of her own. Bradley New pushing the pace for Wesleyan, sends it over to Sydney Mortensen, kicks it out to Steinle, who's gonna find an open shooter on the wing, no good, rebound Romig. Now the Braves looking to push it back the other way. Mid-range jump shot is good, nice shot by Jenna Kramer, she's on the board quickly and it's 22-16. Wesleyan still looking to push the pace. It's Jenna Ferris. Gets it over to Sydney Mortensen, kicks it out to the corner. Now driving is Braley New. She'll kick it out to an open three-point shooter. It's Ferris. She misses. Oh, mad dash for the ball. Lots of players diving for it. The Braves come up with it, and they'll take it down the court. Down only six now on a 4-0 run. Lumen. Oh, it's a roll, Meg, out to Stewart. Now a three by Lumen, and that doesn't draw anything, and it'll go out of bounds. So Wesleyan with the ball now, circling the perimeter. Perimeter. Here's Jenna Ferris handing it off to Gabby Miller, who's going to try and get it into the lane. Now she kicks it out to an open shooter at the top of the key. Misses. Fighting for the rebound is Jenna Kramer, and she's fouled. That's an over-the-back call called against Jenna Ferris. It's going to be her first foul. Another so call that foul on Maddie Miller. So... Kramer taking it back the other way, gets it, gets it inside to Maddie Stewart, who gets it up and in. Nice ball movement there, found Stewart cutting to the hoop, and she just had to lay it in off the glass. 22-18, Braves only down four now. They've been down by as much as 10. Here's a drive all the way to the basket by Miller, and now it's tapped out of bounds, last touch by Wesleyan. But no one able to get in front of Gabby Miller as she drove all the way from the top of the perimeter to the basket relatively unimpeded. Here's Lumen over to Kramer, out on the left wing, looking to get it inside. Well, she'll have to kick it out to Hughes, goes for three, and it's in. Braves down only one on a 9-0 run. 22-21, 7-20 to go in the first half. Wesley with the ball out on the wing, with the whistle, foul away from the ball. It's gonna be called on Maddie Stewart, that's her first. Team foul number two on OU. Not a shooting foul. Kurt away from the ball. Cody's so have to throw it in under the basket. They find someone out on the right wing. She drives the baseline and kicks it out. Here's Gabby Miller from the top of the key. Kicks it out to a shooter. Now she fakes, looks to drive. Now she'll have to send it back out to the perimeter. Not finding much room inside. And now that's going to be a travel against Gabby Miller as she tried to find room. The Braves doing a good job of packing the paint when they try and make that move off the perimeter, get it into the lane. And we're going to have a quick 30-second timeout, so we'll take another break. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. The Ottawa Shopper has a new look with new features. Never miss your favorite TV show with The TV Guides. Find area church times and the popular Kids Talk About God column on the church pages. And get useful employment tips from our weekly Q&A advice column. Call 242-4700 to get your Franklin County address added to our subscription list for free or pick up the Ottawa Shopper at multiple racks around town. 
That's 242-4700. And welcome back to Salina. That was a 30-second timeout taken by Wesleyan. As the Braves are on a 9-0 run, and they've got the ball looking to try and take the lead. Here's Avery Lumen taking the ball down the court. Gets it past half court, works it into Maddie Stewart. Working in on the post, gets it off the glass, but it doesn't fall. Wesleyan gets the board. They'll have to take it down slowly. Now the defender falls, and Barris tried to... Get a, take an advantage, take advantage of it, but couldn't get past. So they'll reset the offense. Wesleyan. Now an open drive for Maddie Miller is rejected by Romig as she goes up for the shot, though. Shot clock down to five seconds. Up and misses. Rebound to Maddie Stewart. Stewart looks to push it herself. She's going to go all the way to the hoop with it off the glass and in. Nice play by Maddie Stewart, and the Braves have taken the lead back with an 11-0 run. Maddie Stewart now up to six points. Maddie Miller gets it over to Steinley. Now here's Jenna Ferris on the wing for Wesleyan. She looks to probe, gets it into the lane, passes it off to Miller, rejected by Romig again. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Wesleyan's going to have to hoist one up. And no good. Romig with the board. So Romig dominating here in the last couple of minutes. As the Braves have reclaimed the lead, 23-22. Five and a half to go here in the first half. Romig at the top of the key, swings it over to Hughes. Hughes almost traveled there, has the ball knocked away. Now here's a foul away from the ball. Referees can confer. And they're going to call that against Wesleyan's Gabby Miller. That's her first foul. There was a major collision away from the ball, and it looks like she might have just, not intentionally, but just ran over a brave over there. So OU will regain possession, and they'll throw it in here. They'll get it to the top of the key. We've got some new players in. Jenna Kramer back into the game. She'll swing it over to Kelsey Hendricks. Hendricks at the top of the key over to Melanie Romig. Romig puts it on the floor and has nowhere to go. She'll get it over to Leslie Spear. Spear cut off. Spear's pass is tipped by Wesleyan, and that one goes out of bounds. It might have been bailed out by that ball going out of bounds. It could have easily been a steal. It was a haphazard pass. The Braves looked like they just couldn't find any sort of avenue there. Melanie Romig, the 5'11 freshman, to throw it in for the Braves. They'll get it into Hendricks, only nine seconds on the shot clock here. They'll go to the hoop, now kicks it out to Maddie Stewart for three, in and out, but a nice rebound by Spear. That's going to be a jump ball as Spear went up, but I believe it was Gabby Miller who got two hands on it. They both possessed it midair, and the possession arrow goes to the Coyotes. And they'll make a substitution as Karen Frazier comes on for the first time today. Their other six-foot player. The junior only plays about six minutes a game. He's got the height, but the game needs a little refining. There's a drive by Ashley Heller and kicks it out. And ball is stolen. And it's going to be a foul against Wesleyan as they try and get it back. That was... Gabby Miller reaching out after she lost possession of the ball and just grabbing, I believe it was Leslie Hendricks or Kelsey Hendricks' wrist. So Maddie Stewart will throw it in. 4.44 to go here in the first half. The Braves still up 23-22. We haven't seen much scoring since they went on that 11-0 run to regain the lead. Here's Hendricks calling a play. Going to get a screen from Spear. Goes to her right, dribbling in. And she's going to kick it back out to a wide open Stewart for three. Oh, looks good, rims out. Still 23-22, Wesleyan looking to push the tempo. Now the drive to the rim, and that's going to be a foul on Romig. Melanie Romig, to be specific. She didn't get vertical, reached that hand in to try and block the shot. Got more hand than ball. So that's going to put Steinle at the line with 4.19 to go here in the first half, and a chance to regain the lead. First free throw is in. That ties it at 23. See another substitution as Jessica King comes on 
for Maddie Stewart, who's played most of the first half here. Second free throw for Steinle gives her the opportunity to take the lead back, and it's good. 24-23 Wesleyan. King throws it into Hendricks. Full court man to man for Wesleyan. So dump it off to King. Here's Melanie Romig over to Jenna Kramer who looks to get to the basket. Fouled and one. Lays it in off the glass. That was the the six footer Taryn Frazier who did the same thing Romig did on the other end and trying to go for the block. Didn't stay vertical. Reached in. If you don't get all ball you're going to get called for the foul every time. The free throw is perfect. 26-24 Braves. For a four to go in the first half. Ashley Heller pushing the tempo for Wesley. She'll dump it off to Steinley. Steinley kicks it out to Mortensen at the top of the key. Back to Heller. Probing, looking for room, and she's got it. She gets to the basket. That was Steinley. Got the handoff from Heller. And an open lane to the hoop. That ties it up at 26. Hendricks being guarded tough all the way down the court. King at the top of the key, swings it to Hendricks. Hendricks looking for a place to pass, gets it to King, drives the baseline. Layup attempt is out of control and it goes way over the rim. Easy rebound for Wesleyan. Now it's a nice move by Heller to draw her defender off her feet, but she loses the handle on it and it's going to be stolen by the Braves. It's coming back the other way. Here's Jenna Kramer to slow things up. Not a long rest for Ashley Romig as she's waiting to check in now. Here's Melanie Romig looking to drive. A little guy hook is short, rebounded by Wesley. Still 26 all. 2.45 to go in the first half. Sydney Mortensen driving to her left, kicks it out to the corner. Here's Steinle goes up and she's fouled. The shot does not fall, but she'll go to the line for a pair. That foul called on King, so we'll see a few more subs here. As Catlin Hughes and Maddie Stewart are both waiting to come in in addition to Ashley Romig. Two shots for Heller, and her first one rims out. So we'll see King come off the floor. Spear comes off the floor, as does Melanie Romig. Stewart, Ashley Romig, and Catlin Hughes on in their place. Hughes just a 5'4 freshman, getting a lot of playing time early. Second free throw is good. Coyotes reclaim the lead, 27-26. Hendricks going to take the ball down the court again, being defended the whole way down. Romig sets the screen, a little pick and roll. Hendricks wasn't looking for it. Here's Stewart looking to take it to the hoop, a little too aggressive. There's Romig, gets the ball, can't get it to fall. Now she's going to be called for a foul as after she misses the shot, trying to regain the offensive rebound. Coach is telling Maddie Stewart just to shoot the ball and stop trying to drive. That was an off-balance shot that she had to take on the drive there. Here's Brittany Lewis to the line to shoot two. As Wesleyan is in the bonus. So an awkward shot motion. and That one not even close to going in. 2.21 to go here in the first half. Wesleyan with a one-point lead, 27-26. Brittany Lewis, her second shot, does go in. Kind of a line drive shooting motion, but that one goes in. But all of the near and pass there, but Kramer able to reel it in, gets it over to Stewart, over to Hendricks on the left wing. Now she'll back off, send it into Romig. Romig going to work on the post. He gets it stolen from her strip, and Wesleyan's going to take it the other way. Ashley Heller sending it over to Steinley, looking to drive. Doesn't have a lane. She'll get it over to Heller, who kicks it out to Ferris. Ferris back to Steinley. Working around the perimeter, trying to find a driving lane. They'll have to kick it out and go for three from the corner. No good. Rebounded by Kramer. She'll take it herself back the other way. Doesn't have numbers. and She'll return the ball to Hendricks, the point guard. Now back out to Kramer. Kramer to Stewart at the top of the key. Doesn't take the shot. Let's give it off to Hughes on the right wing. Wing now swings it over to Hendricks at the top of the key. 
Over to Kramer. She's on the left side. Tries to work it into Maddie Stewart. She's being mobbed underneath. The foul call goes against Ashley Heller. Heller's first foul, but the Braves are in the bonus as well, so Stewart's going to go to the line for one and one. Or for two shots, excuse me. First one rims out. A rare free throw miss for Maddie Stewart. Second shot, nothing but net. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven. Wesleyan looking to drive up and in. A nice take there by Brittany Lewis. Thirty to twenty-seven. Three-point lead for Wesleyan as we come down to about a minute to go here in the first half. As Ashley Rome swings it over to Kramer. Kramer finds a wide open Hendricks underneath the basket, goes up with it, but the late pressure is enough to force the miss. Fifty seconds to go now. Wesleyan pushing the tempo. Kick it out to Brittany Lewis, sends it over to Ferris. Ferris looking to drive. Now she kicks it out to an open shooter. Misses the three-point attempt. There's Romig gathering the rebound underneath. They get it over to Hughes, who takes it up and over half the half-court line. Get it over to Kramer out on the right wing. Here's Romig at the top of the key. And she tries to pass it to Stewart. It was headed out of bounds. A great save. Nice hustle play by Hughes. Now the open three way off by Kramer, but Romig was there to clean up the mess with the offensive rebound and the putback. 30 to 29, under 10 seconds remaining here in the second half. And there's the foul on the drive by Steinle. She pulled up to take an off-balance jumper, but that's going to be a foul called against Catlin Hughes. Caitlin Hughes' first foul of the game. And the free throw is good. There's going to be exactly three seconds left on the clock when the Braves get the ball back, whether that's off a miss or a throw-in. Wesleyan's lead up to two. Now three after that made free throw. So they have three seconds to try and make something happen. Here's Kramer. He's going to have to hoist it. And off the backboard, no good. So that'll take us to halftime in Salina. Kansas Wesleyan 32, the Ottawa Braves 29. We'll take a break and be back with the halftime show here on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. This is Lou Baker at CarStar Ottawa. Our technicians are highly trained, iCar certified repair experts. We provide continued education for our employees and the latest equipment to ensure the highest quality repairs. We work hard at staying your number one collision repair shop. 1-800-CARSTAR. Relax, we'll take it from here. Smart Ottawa shoppers know Costantino's Price Chopper has the best rewards program in town. Only Price Chopper lets you earn points on all your purchases. Visit MyPriceChopper.com and start saving on food or fuel today. Shop Costantino's, your local family-owned grocer since 1948. Kramer Pharmacy, downtown Ottawa, hopes you're enjoying this KOFO sports broadcast and wishes all the area teams good luck this season. Call Kramer Pharmacy today and ask about their convenient MedSync program that allows you to have all your prescriptions filled at the same time each month. Call 242-2055. Imagine what you could do if you didn't have knee pain. The freedom and ability you once had would improve your quality of life. Not all knee pain requires surgery. Call Franklin County Chiropractic today at 242-9393 and schedule your Believe It or Not special $17 knee exam. Don't you wish gift shopping was as easy as one, two, three? It is at Sutton's Jewelry. Introducing the Sutton's Love List. One, invite your loved one to stop in. Two, we'll make a list of his or her favorites. And three, we'll share it with you and you'll give the best Christmas gift ever this holiday season. We'll also include free gift wrapping. Sutton's Jewelry, making your gift shopping as easy as 123 at 207 South Main. And welcome back to Salina, where we're at halftime. The OU 
women's basketball team facing off against Kansas Wesleyan and right down right now down 32 to 29 things were pretty even to start with and then Wesleyan was able to go on a run and pull out to a 22 to 12 lead but Ottawa battled back drew a number of fouls hit a couple of big shots scored 11 straight and regained the lead 23 to 22 and it was sort of back and forth at that point Wesley able to slowly pull ahead and get that 32 to 29 advantage here at halftime player of the game so far would have to go to Carly Steinle of Kansas Wesleyan who's got 16 points kind of a quiet 16 points if you can score 16 and a half quietly half of them came at the free throw line where she's 8 of 9 she's just 4 of 8 from the field but uh, definitely has been the biggest thorn in the side of the Braves so far. Again, with half the team's points, 16 of the Coyotes, 32. Coyotes were up 20 to 12 at the end of the first quarter, but were outscored 17-12 in the second. That gets us to where we are with a three-point deficit for the Braves. Ashley Romig and Maddie Stewart tied for the team high in points for OU with nine points apiece. Romig really dominating in other ways, though, with two, two blocks, a steal, and nine rebounds for the first half to go with their nine first half points. So she certainly seems destined for a double-double. And the, uh, the two blocks have been huge as well, but she's also turned the ball over three times as the ball has had the ball slapped just out of her hands a couple of times as they dumped it into her in the post. We'll go ahead and take another quick timeout and then be back with more of the Halftime Show. You're listening to OU Braves Basketball here on KOFO Sports. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. When quality matters, choose the best. Choose Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling. Call today and make sure your heating and cooling system is ready for the season at 785-242-9273. Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, maintaining your comfort for over 30 years. People's Bank in Ottawa is proud to support our area sports teams. From People's Bank Field at Ottawa University to our Bucks for Buckets promotion and more, we believe our local sports programs are an investment in our future. Best of luck to all the teams from all of us at People's Bank. Member FDIC. To protect your family and plan for your financial future, get to know your modern woodman agent. Hello, I'm Dale Pearson, your modern woodman agent in Ottawa, Kansas. Call me today at 242-6566. Modern Woodman of America. Touching lives, securing futures. Eric Price and his staff at the Lamb Roberts Funeral Homes are proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast and honored to help so many families in the community with compassionate care when it's needed most. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Ottawa, Baldwin City, and Overbrook. This is Ryan Disborough, your State Farm Insurance agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1660. Ransom Memorial Hospital Cancer Care, your cancer-fighting team, is open and accepting patients. For a personalized care experience, call 785-229-8203, online at ransom.org, or at 1301 South Main Street, Ottawa. RMH Cancer Care. Close to home, close to your heart. And we're back in Salina with more of the halftime show. The OU women's basketball team down 32 to 29 here at Kansas Wesleyan. Looking at the stat sheet, it's uh, been a low-scoring game, and it's not hard to see why. As these two teams have both struggled significantly to score. If you look at Wesleyan shooting, just 11 of 34 from the field and 1 of 14 from three-point range. Their saving grace has been shooting 9 of 11 from the free throw line. But just 32% overall and 7% from outside. But the Braves have not been able to capitalize as they're shooting just 9 of 27. That's 33%, so not much of an advantage there. 2 of 8 from outside, so the two teams combined shooting just 3 of 22 from behind the arc and combining to shoot just 
20 of 61 overall. But again, a combined 18 of 21 from the free throw line. So that's where a lot of their points have come from. Some of the biggest or two of the biggest key factors for success, two of the four factors if you study basketball analytics at all are offensive rebounding and turnovers. And the Braves are on the wrong side of the of both those columns. It's Wesleyan able to pull down eight offensive boards so far compared to the Braves' five. Now, that advantage was bigger earlier on before Ashley Romig really started to establish her presence on the offensive board. But then in the turnover category, Wesleyan turned over just five times compared to the Braves' nine. Turning the ball over on nine times in one half is not going to help you out any if you're struggling shooting. So... Really, you could point to a lot of different things and say if either one of these teams was able to get the ball in the basket a little more efficiently there in the first half, then it might be a very different game. But with both teams going through similar struggles in the shooting column, it has led us to a uh, pretty even match with just a three-point deficit for the Braves here on the road. Certainly nothing unmanageable. We'll go ahead and take another break, and we'll be back with more of the Halftime Show. You're listening to OU Braves Basketball here on KOFO Sports. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. People's Bank in Ottawa is proud to support our area sports teams. From People's Bank Field at Ottawa University to our Bucks for Buckets promotion and more, we believe our local sports programs are an investment in our future. Best of luck to all the teams from all of us at People's Bank. Member FDIC. Community journalism is thriving at the Ottawa Herald. Three days a week in print and every day online, the Herald's award-winning staff covers the news that matters to you. Breaking news, sports, events, and so much more just as the Herald has done for more than 140 years. Call 242-4700 to subscribe today, or find us online at www.ottawaherald.com, on Facebook, or download our app. At State Farm, our goal is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This is State Farm Agent Keith King in Ottawa. Let me help you protect what's most important to you. Give my office a call at 785-242-9435 or stop by at 111 South Main Street in Ottawa. Hi, I'm Dalton Evans. I'm 10 years old and happy to report that I've never had a cavity. Thanks to brushing twice a day and two cleanings a year at Dr. Hale Family Dentistry. Schedule your family's appointment today by calling 242-1800. Since 1944, families of Franklin County have called Dingle and Son Mortuary and Crematory in their time of need. Why? Because of the peace of mind received knowing that Dingle and Son will take charge and exceed expectations. Visit DingleMortuary.com. And welcome back to Salina. And you're listening to OU Brave basketball with the women's team playing here in the early game and one we'll of the men's team going against Kansas Wesley and immediately afterward. Going through the stat sheet here for the Braves, Jenna Kramer has played the most minutes of anyone so far with 18 minutes played. She's got five points on three shots. Missed her only three point attempts. But five points, three rebounds, two assists, and a block shot for Kramer. So a nice first half worth of work for her. Kelsey Hendricks has played 14 minutes. The point guard, not an integral part of the offense from a scoring perspective. She's shot twice, hasn't made a shot yet. 0 for 1 from three-point range. Does have two rebounds and an assist. Ashley Romig has played 14 minutes. She, of course, has nine points, nine boards, four of those boards on the offensive end, and that's huge. As she was able to... Uh, score some points off of what looked to be bad situations and bad possessions for the Braves. Also had the two blocks and the steal, but as we mentioned before, the three turnovers kind of holding holding her back as well as 
she's tried to go to work there in the post, but she gets double teamed almost immediately when she gets the ball underneath. And Maddie Stewart, of course, has gotten her 17 minutes. She's 3 of 8 from the field, 0 for 3 from outside. So kind of a cold start by Maddie Stewart. By Maddie Stewart's standards, at least. She's 3 of 4 from the line, has 9 points, 2 rebounds. Then Caitlin Hughes has 3 points off of 1 shot, a made 3-pointer. She's played 9. Kaylee Williams has played 5 minutes. She's got 3 points off of... An A and one. She also committed two quick fouls, and that's contributed to her lower minute total. She's also got two turnovers. But Avery Lumen, Melanie Romig, Leslie Spear, Jessica King, Rachel Parker have all seen a handful of minutes here and there. But those are the major contributors for the Braves so far. And, you know, Ashley Romig has certainly done a lot of work, and Maddie Stewart has as well, but. Stewart with nine points off of eight shots, and she can score a little more efficiently in the second half. That will probably go quite a long way. We're just a couple minutes away from the start of the second half, so we'll go ahead and take one more break here from Salina. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. Kramer Pharmacy, downtown Ottawa, hopes you're enjoying this KOFO Sports broadcast and wishes all the area teams good luck this season. Call Kramer Pharmacy today and ask about their convenient MedSync program that allows you to have all your prescriptions filled at the same time each month. Call 242-2055. Imagine what you could do if you didn't have knee pain. The freedom and ability you once had would improve your quality of life. Not all knee pain requires surgery. Call Franklin County Chiropractic today at 242-9393 and schedule your Believe It or Not special $17 knee exam. This is Ryan Disborough, your State Farm Insurance agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1660. Eric Price and his staff at the Lamb Roberts Funeral Homes are proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast and honored to help so many families in the community with compassionate care when it's needed most. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Ottawa, Baldwin City, and Overbrook. Anyone can call themselves a construction company, slap a sign on the side of their truck, and drive around town looking for work. Is that who you want to hire? No, you're smarter than that. Wise Guys Construction at 108 North Main in Ottawa has been in business for 13 years, building new residential homes, adding additions and finishing basements, solving commercial structure needs for businesses, and repairing damage left behind from fire or water. When it comes to who you hire for residential and commercial construction needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction at 785-229-5651. Welcome back to Salina. We're just about to start the second half. The Braves down 32-29. They trailed by as much as 10 early in the second quarter, but made a comeback using an 11-0 run, and now they're down just three as we start the third third quarter. Maddie Stewart with the ball, looking to drive, backing down. Her defender goes up, has it blocked, gets the ball back, goes up again. Looks like a foul, no call. She's going to try and kick it out. And it's tipped by Wesley and it goes out of bounds. She tried to kick it out to Kramer out in the corner. So Stewart fighting to try and get that ball up, but was denied. Here's Kramer at the top of the key, sends it into Stewart. Stewart to drive, gets a bump. She missed the shot, and then they're going to call Ashley Roman for an offensive foul going for the rebound. Looks like, if anything, it might have been over the back attempt on Wesley, but it goes the other way. That'll be foul number two on Roman. There's a missed shot by Wesley, and coming back the other way. Here's Kaylee Williams looking to take it all the way. His little stutter step, the layup is empty short. Now Wesley is going to try and run. Wesley is taking it back, and she's going to be fouled. That's Briley New, fouled before she tried to go up for the layup. So Wesley to throw it in underneath the basket. 
they get it into Knox. Knox is going to dribble it out now. It's new at the top of the key. So swing it over to Sidney Mortensen. Sends it over to Ferris. Ferris out to Steinle. Nothing but that. She's got 19 now. And she drains the three, and it's a six-point game. Here's Kramer. Looking to get it to Hendricks, but it's denied. She's in danger of a five-second call. Stewart barely managed to save that from being an over and back. And here's Kaylee Williams into Stewart. She'll put up a three-pointer. It's off the front of the rim. And rebounded by Wesley, and they'll take it back the other way. She didn't get a good look. Just glanced at the rim before putting that one up. Didn't get much time to square her feet. There's Coyote's new driving, and Ashley Romig got the block, but it was just knocked right out of her hands by Carey. Well, excuse me, by Knox. So Romig with her fourth turnover after getting her third block. And Wesleyan will throw it in. Here's Knox at the top of the key, drains the three. So Wesleyan was ice cold from outside to start the, the game, going one of 14 from three-point range in the first half. They've now hit two of their first three attempts here in the second, and they've jumped out to a nine-point lead. They're defending well. Here's Romig going up and off the glass and in. And now the Braves want a timeout. We'll take a quick 30-second break and be back. They're listening to OU Braves basketball on KOFO Sports. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. Welcome back to Salino. You just pulled within seven, called a timeout, and Wesleyan with the ball up 38-31, seven and a half to go in the third quarter. There's a three, and they made another one. That's Jenna Ferris for three, and it's a 10-point game. Wesleyan reigning in threes here, having hit three in the first three minutes of the quarter. Williams over to Roman, who swings it over to Hendricks. Hendricks driving now, kicks it back out to Kramer. Kramer's going to get to Romig. He's going to back down her defender, goes up and gets the foul called against Knox. That's going to be foul number three against Mariah Knox. They may consider sending her to the bench. And Romig goes to the line for a pair. First one falls, 41-32. And they will go ahead and substitute Gabby Miller in for Knox, who's got the three fouls with 17 minutes left in this game. Romig's second free throw is up and good, so it's 41-33. Still an eight-point advantage for Wesleyan. Braves will need to guard out to the perimeter and stop giving up the open looks as Wesleyan has found their three-point throw. Here's Steinle passing off to Ferris. Ferris back to Steinle, looking to drive. Has it cut off, and it's blocked by Romig again. Romig's fifth block. She passes it half the distance to the court to Kramer. She's going to get into the lane, and one. Leaned into the contact and finished off the glass. And now Kramer's got a chance to make this a five-point game. 41-35, 6.45 to go in the third quarter. Three throws in, and it's a five-point contest. So every time the Braves get down by double digits, they come rallying back. Wesleyan looking to get it into the paint, and they kick it out to the perimeter. And here's an open shot passed up as Jenna Ferris tries to drive. She finds herself in a tough situation, passes it out. Briley New, Briley New to a wide-open Steinle, who missed that three. 
That one goes out of bounds. Last touched by Wesley, and so it'll go to the Braves. But they got lucky. Styling's got 19 points so far. He hit her last three-point attempt, and they left her wide open out on the wing. Hendricks taking it down the court for the Braves. Hendricks over to Williams. Williams looking to drive, overshoots the rim. Easy rebound for Wesley, and they'll take it down the court a little more slowly this time. Steinle getting it over to Lee. Now here's Ferris, back out to Steinle, another open three. He got it. Can't leave Steinle open. He's got 22 points here, and it's an eight-point game again. Williams over to Hendricks, who's going to reset the offense. Gets a pick from Roman. The defender falls down. He runs into trouble, and that's going to be a reach by Jenna Ferris going for the steal. The defender fell down. She drove, but then ran into a double team and couldn't find. Obviously, when you've got one person on the floor and two people double teaming you, there's got to be somebody open. But as she looked around to try and find it, there's a reach in by Jenna Ferris. So be a throw in for the Braves, down eight, five and a half to go here in the third quarter. Passes it in to Kramer, finds Maddie Stewart, turns around, has it stolen by Gabby Miller. Gabby Miller wants to try and go the distance. She almost loses control. She goes up, draws the foul, but can't lay it in. Not careful enough with the ball so far, surrendering too many steals to the Coyotes. That was steal number nine. First free throw by Miller is good. Nine steals by the Coyotes and 11 turnovers by the Braves. That is not a good way to win on the road. Gabby Miller to shoot her second. And that'll be good. The lead is back up to 10. Williams gets the inbound. So will get it back over to Hendricks. He sends it over to Kramer. Dangerous pass, but she reels it in. Maddie Stewart makes the cut to the lane. Not open. Now she'll get the ball out on the wing. Looks to feed Romig. And that ball is stolen. Going back the other way again for Wesleyan. Actually, excuse me, that was Spear and not Romig. Here's Gabby Miller. Kicks it out to Keller, who will... Now tries to send it in. It was a loose ball. The Braves couldn't get to it. Now an easy drive and in one for Briley New. Who drove the baseline, got just a little light contact, and laid it right in. We're going to see a substitution. Chelsea Hendricks comes off in favor of Risha Parker. Riley News free throw is good. And that's a 13-point lead, the biggest so far for Wesleyan. Now full court press, or at least full court man-to-man -man for Wesleyan. And Maddie Stewart takes it over the half court. So hand it off to Parker. They collided a little bit. But Able to hand it off cleanly. Now here's Stewart back at the top of the key. Swings it over to Williams. Williams swings it back over to Parker, over to Kramer. Not finding any lane. Here's Williams, passes up the three. Parker is going to take it from the corner. It's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Wesleyan. And it's going to be Steinle. It looks like she might be able to take it coast to coast. She's going to circle it off, though. Here's Gabby Miller. Tries to take it to the rim. Goes up and in. And it's a 15-point game for the Coyotes. King is ready to check in for OU. And OU wants a timeout. For full timeouts, we'll go ahead and take a, a break for a full minute here. Braves have fallen down by 15, 51-36. You're listening to Braves basketball here on KOFO Sports. 
At Messenger's Home Furnishings in South Ottawa, we've always been serious about providing the best value on furniture and bedding in East Central Kansas. Come visit Kansas' newest America's Mattress Gallery inside Messenger's Home Furnishings, just west of Sirloin Stockade in South Ottawa. Need to know if your child's game or practice has been canceled due to weather? Sign up now for Ottawa Recreation Commission's text alerts. Go to orcottawaks.org to sign up or for more information. Sports, information, and and entertainment in East Central Kansas. KOFO K279 CS Ottawa, where keeping you informed comes first. And welcome back to Salina, where Kansas Wesleyan leads the OU Braves women's basketball team 51 to 36. And if there's any one number here that stands out as being the major issue for OU, it's got to be that turnover column. They've turned the ball over 12 times compared to just five for Kansas Wesleyan. And it hurt them quite a bit. Throw into Parker. Coach Tate was preaching offensive aggressiveness and getting the ball to the basket during the timeout. We'll see what they do here. Here's Williams looking to try and get it into Stewart. It's not there, so she'll drive. Turns, goes up for the layup, and it's in. So they do get it right to the basket, and they score. So a 13-point game, three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Here's New over to Brittany Lewis, getting it into Miller, who dives and kind of a broken play there as Maddie Miller dove on the ball and as OU ran to try and grab for it on the floor, they left someone wide open. That led to two easy points for the Coyotes. That ball is tipped by Wesley and it goes out of bounds. 15-point game, 53-38 as Romig comes back in for OU. Romig and King both out there. Both six-footers, so a tall lineup for the Braves. Here's Romig working against Maddie Miller, backs her down. This is going to pass to a wide-open Kramer who gets the layup to roll in, 53-40. They'll have to be up now. Ashley Heller comes over to Miller. Now back to Heller. He's going to find Mortensen. He's swinging around here. Steinley going up for three. Short. Rebounded by King. And that's going to be a foul on Sydney Mortensen as she went after the rebound and bumped into King. Team foul number four. That's four fouls on each team. So the next one will send either team into the bonus. Ottawa down 53-40. Biggest deficit so far has been 15. Here's Parker into the cross half court. Working against Heller. Picked up her dribble, got in some trouble there, but she's able to get it out to Romig. Romig now looking to drive, loses the ball again. That's turnover number five for Romig. Now here's Maddie Miller on the fast break. The pass over to Gabby Miller. Misses. Maddie Miller with the offensive rebound. Misses. Gets her on board again. Now she's fouled as she goes up for another shot. So you've got two six-footers in there. You expect more rebounding down low. Three consecutive offensive rebounds for Wesley, and it results in a foul and two free throws for Maddie Miller. She will miss the first one off the back of the iron. We'll see four new players in for the Braves. Lineup out there now. It's going to be Melanie Romig. Ashley Romig stays out there. Kelsey Hendricks. Caitlin Hughes and then Maddie Stewart round out the lineup. 54-40 to 40 after the second free throw is good. Stewart to throw it in. Go get it to Hughes. Hughes takes it down. Clearly looking to get it to Hendricks, and she does. Hendricks crosses half court, gets it over to Maddie Stewart. Swings it over to Roman. Ashley Roman calling for it down low. Called off. Here's Hughes with a pull-up jumper. It's just short. Rebound to Wesleyan. Braves going to a little bit of full court pressure. Not a press, but applying pressure all the whole way down the court. Wesleyan able to break it and set up their offense. 
He's Steinling in the corner, gets it into Knox. A nice little pass and backdoor, but this layup is missed by New. Well, here's Hendricks for OU, setting up the offense, gets it over to Romig. Romig over to Melanie Romig. This is Hughes. Over to Ashley Romig. Long two. Inefficient shot. Misses. Wesleyan goes the other way. Here's Steinle over to Barrett who hits the three. And that's the biggest lead of the game now for Wesleyan. 17 points is 57-40. And Wesleyan has just opened up an offensive explosion with 25 points here in the third quarter. Here's Romig over to Hughes. And Tries to get it into Roaming, but it's stolen. Now, Wesleyan will lose possession. And I believe it was Steinle diving on the floor, trying to get pass it off to a teammate, but it touched the sideline. So it'll be a throw into the Braves. Melanie Roaming to throw it in. She gets it over to Hendricks. Hendricks over to Hughes, has it stolen. It's going to be a fast break. Here's Jenna Ferris, goes up for the easy layup. She's got it, 59-40. Braves have 10 seconds to try and get one more shot in here in the third quarter, a quarter that's gone very poorly for them. Three seconds left. Hendricks doesn't seem aware of the shot clock or the uh, time clock. Time runs out. We'll take a break. A huge quarter for Wesley and puts them up 59-40 going into the fourth quarter. You're listening to OU Braves basketball on KOFO Sports. In this season of sharing and celebration, no gift is merrier than the beautiful Samsung Galaxy S7. That is, unless it's two Samsung Galaxy S7s. That's right. Buy one Samsung Galaxy S7 at Sprint and get a second free. Twice the nice at one nice price. Even nicer, pair the Samsung Galaxy S7 with the Sprint Unlimited Freedom Plan and get unlimited mobile-optimized data, talk, and text starting at $40 per month per line for a family of four. So dash to a Sprint store, Sprint.com slash holiday, or call 1-800-SPRINT-1 today and get the gifts that will make spirits bright, now and all through the year. Coverage and offer not available everywhere. Subject to credit and $30 activation fee. Excludes taxes, surcharges, roaming, and premium content. Video streams optimized at up to 480p plus resolution. And music at up to 500 kilobits per second. Games limited to 2 megabits per second. All while on the Sprint Network. Data deprioritization applies during congestion. First GS7, 2896 for 24 months with installment billing. Second phone free after monthly credits. Taxes due at sale. Early termination results and remaining balance due. Restrictions apply. Welcome back to Salina. I'm David Potter with KOFO Sports. Bringing you OU basketball. It's the women's team playing right now, and they are down 59-40 to Wesleyan after being outscored 27-11 in that third quarter. Wesleyan shot 5 of 8 from three-point range. And the Braves turning it over six times in that third quarter might have been the biggest issue. The Braves go to a zone look, a trapping zone, just to try and throw Wesleyan off a little bit offensively. Wesleyan swinging the ball from side to side. They try and get it in. Ashley, or excuse me, that was Madison Romain getting her hand up there and knocking it out of bounds. 12 seconds remaining on the shot clock, and Cody's will throw it in again. There's Riley New trying to drive. Gets it over to Ferris, passes it over to New. New driving the baseline, goes for the reverse layup, can't get it. And Ashley Romain, or Madison Romain, got the rebound. Me Melanie Romain, I'm sorry. The pass to Ashley Romain, now over to Avery Lumen. Back to Ashley Romain, swings it out to Stewart. Stewart trying to open up her own shot. Works off a screen, driving to the hoop. And she has that blocked by Knox. They're going to call it a jump ball. She came down on it with two hands. They'll say it's dual possession. Four seconds left on the shot clock. They'll have to shoot it quick. Lumen throws it into Romig, who drives and gets it in. Nice play there by Melanie Romig. 59-42, still a 17-point game with nine minutes to go. 
So the Braves have a long way to go. They'll stay in that trapping zone. Barris over to Steinle. And here's New. They'll continue passing around the perimeter. Now they'll get it into Knox inside. So go up to two, uncontested. Romig didn't get her hands up. And Knox able to just lay it in without much trouble. 61-42, Lumen on the dribble gets it to Stewart who heads straight to the hoop and she fouled. It's going to be Sydney Mortensen called for her fourth. Eight twenty to go in the game here. The Braves find themselves down 84, 61, 42 as Maddie Stewart goes to the line, hits her first free throw. On two substitutions, as Jenna Kramer and Kaylee Williams come on for Hughes and Melanie Romo. Stewart shoot a second free throw, up and in. Seventeen point game. They haven't gone to any sort of full court press yet. They'll stay in that trapping zone. New has to switch direction, slides it over to Ferris on the left side, back to New, back to Ferris. Ferris is going to launch from deep, and she's got it. Jenna Ferris is a few feet behind the three-point line, and she knocks it down with ease. Here's Williams driving. She'll stop at the free-throw line, put up a jumper, and it misses. Gabby Miller taking it the other way. Get over to Ferris for another three. In! Jenna Ferris lighting it up now. Her fourth three-pointer of the night. She's got 18. 67-44. Stewart driving. Draws the... Nope, she's going to get called for the charge. So nothing working for the Braves right now. Stewart goes to the hoop and is called for the charge. And they find themselves down 23 in Wesley and with the ball. So the Braves trying to avoid their picking up their first conference loss. But things looking a little dark right now. New dribbles it down for Wesley and sends it over to Steinley. Steinley dribbles it all the way over to the left and gives it back to New. New kicks it out to Ferris. Why not for three? And she hits another one. Jenna Ferris is absolutely on fire. The whole team is raining in threes here in the second half. The three-point shooting is one of the things you can do the least about as a defense. There's Lumen driving and picking up the foul. But sometimes teams just start hitting threes and there's not a whole lot you can do and that's kind of the way it feels right now. First free throw is good, and it's 70 to 45. Wesleyan with a comfortable lead here in the fourth quarter. And Ashley Heller checks in for the Coyotes. Second free throw by Lumen is good. It's a 24 point game. Heller takes it down the court. He'll swing it over to Gabby Miller, looking to drive up off the glass and in. Not much resistance as she got to the basket against the zone, and if you can find that lane to drive, then you can get some open pass to the hoop, and that's exactly what she found. There's Kramer at the top of the key. She looks to drive. Drives directly into the six-footer knock and calls for the foul. Knock is fourth foul. We're probably at a point now where Wesley is not too concerned with foul trouble. Six and a half remaining in a 26-point lead. The first free throw is off. Knox will sub off as Maddie Miller comes back on for Wesley. Second free throw by Kramer is up and good. Still a 25-point game. Six and a half to go. Heller taking it down for Wesley, being defended by Kramer. And here's the drive by Gabby Miller. Misses the layup, rebounded by Stewart. Gets it over to Kramer, who's going to slow things up just a little bit. Trying to set up a motion offense here. They'll try and work it into Romig, but well underthrown on the entry pass. Intercepted. Now here's Gabby Miller driving. 
Stewart called for a foul. Really no noticeable contact there. It looked like she did reach out for the ball, but I'm not sure she touched her, but foul called nonetheless. It's three fouls on Stewart as Gabby Miller goes to the line. She's got 10 points already. Carly Steinle, who is the hero of the first half, has 22. Jenna Ferris has been the hero of the second with 21. Free throw is off target for Gabby Miller. Wesleyan was one of 14 from outside in the first half, and now here in the second, eight of nine. Which at some point, you just have to tip your cap and say, if you're gonna hit eight of nine three-pointers, there's just not a whole lot you can do. Here's Kramer finds Lumen, wants to work it into Roaming, but they're blanketing her. Here's Williams trying to get it into the lane. She'll hand it off to Kramer. Kramer drives. And she'll have to kick it back out to Williams. Williams, a quick move, gets to the hoop, but misses the layup. Rebounded by Williams, got her own board, and then laid it back in. 73-49, 24 point game, 535 remaining. This is Gabby Miller for Wesleyan, passing it off to Steinle. Steinle kick it out to Jenna Ferris, who hoists up another three, misses that one, but Steinle gets the offensive rebound. Now over to Heller. She'll get it over to Steinle. In no hurry to pressure the basket here. Here's Heller, kicks it over to Ferris. Ferris with a spin move, now kicks it out to Heller for three. Misses, boarded by Lumen. She'll send it over to Williams. Fast break, gets it over to Jessica King, whose layup rims out. Rebounded by Wesley, and now Ferris is gonna try and take it. Now she'll peel off at the end of her drive and send it to the top of the key to Gabby Miller. Gabby Miller, a nice Crossover, now kicks it out to Heller for three, misses. Nice diving effort by Wesleyan, and they keep the rebound alive, and it eventually ends up in the hands of Ferris. Now Ferris driving, up and in. So Jenna Ferris, with a game-high 23 points. And we're going to... See a timeout taken by Wesley, and we'll go ahead and take a minute ourselves. It's 75 49, Wesley, and leading the Braves. 4.20 to go in the game. You're listening to KOFO Sports. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. It's time to pump up the holiday spirit in seconds. Right now at the Home Depot, a nine-foot Santa or snowman inflatable is just $29.88. You save over 30 bucks. A friendly nine-foot Santa or not-so-abominable snowman will welcome family and friends and the real Santa to your home in a big way. A big, instantly inflatable way. Save 30 bucks on a nine-foot snowman or Santa inflatable, only $29.88. Only at the Home Depot. More saving. More doing. Valid through November 23rd. Limit three per customer. And we're back in Salina, 4.20 to go. The Braves down 26 after a combination of too many turnovers and just impossibly hot three-point shooting by Wesleyan. Now Parker will take it down the court for the Braves and get over to Melanie Romig. Romig over to Stewart at the top of the key. So swing it to Hughes. Hughes looks to drive. Now she's going to send it in. Leslie Spear, who fouled. Fouls on the floor, so this will be a throw-in for the Braves. Parker to throw it in. So he lost it back to Hughes in the backcourt. Hughes over to Stewart. Stewart with a jab step left, drives to a right, and finishes through contact. A nice in one play for Maddie Stewart. 
had a hard time getting going here in the second half. So it's nice to see her find the bottom of the net. Shooting the four of 14 for the night. Got 11, looking to make it 12 here. As the Braves are down 75-51, 3.55 remaining. Free throw is good. Maddie Stewart's got, actually that basket made a 13, so now it's 14 after the free throw. Wesleyan taking back down the other way. Sarah, the handoff to Steinle. Now she'll send it over to New, and New has it stolen by Romig, and Romig will draw the foul as Carly Steinle reached in to try and get the steal. Wesleyan has become very aggressive reaching in because they've had so much success stripping the ball from OU. They have 13 steals tonight as the Braves have turned it over 17 times. And when Romig hits the first free throw. hit the second it would pull them to within 21 but with just 336 remaining it's off to the right rebounded by Gabby Miller now a full court press shown by the Braves Wesleyan able to get it across half court now new being guarded by Hughes sends it over to Jana Ferris Ferris out to Steinle on the wing Steinle dribbles it all the way around gets it to Mortensen Mortensen back to Steinle because Mortensen from way behind the three-point line gets nothing, and it goes out of bounds. Came up well short. She hoisted it from a good four feet behind the line. Ottawa down 22, 308 to go. It's 75-53. Wesleyan on top. Hughes to dribble it down for the Braves. To get it to Stewart. Stewart clears. Driving, working with the back to the basket. Nice move, but can't get it to roll in. Showed off a nice little spin move in the paint there, but gravity working against her. Here's Jana Ferris. Looks to drive. Has it poked away by Stewart. They're going to call her for a foul. That's four fouls on Stewart. 2.41 to go. Team foul number three, so it'll be a throw-in for Wesley. They'll throw it into Ferris, who is fouled by Stewart, and that's, that's going to be the end of the night for Stewart. So Maddie Stewart will come out of the game fouled out, having scored 14 on just four or five, 15 shooting, all four from outside. Three turnovers, so not a career night for the OU star. Two and a half minutes to go. Braves down 22. Here's Jana Ferris kicking it over to Steinle. Out to Mortensen. Back to Jana Ferris. That's for three. Misses. So she can miss three. For a while there, it looked like she wasn't capable. Parker to take it down for OU. 2.15 remaining. The pass over to Hughes at the top of the key. Now here's Romig on the right wing. He's driving in, drives to the baseline, and then throws it away. Pass intercepted by New. New weaving in and out of traffic. Kicks it out to Jana Ferris. Fakes the three, drives in, takes the mid-range jumper. Late whistle after she shoots, but it does look like Romig got her on the arm. Melanie Romig foul. Ferris already has 23 points. Hasn't been to the line yet. Two, two here, hits the first. Gives her 24. Second one is up and good, so it's 77 53. Wesleyan has blown this one open here. They really did it in the third quarter and just kind of coasted on that through the fourth. The Braves haven't really been able to make a dent in the lead since that offensive explosion in the third. Here's Kramer over to Hughes. Hughes tries to dish it out to Spear. It 
it's intercepted. Now Hughes calls for the reach, trying to get that ball back as Steinle drib dribbled it past him. That puts them into the bonus. That'll be two shots now for Carly Steinle. 22 hits the free throw and makes it 23. One of two players with more than 20 points for Wesleyan tonight. Second one rims out. Rebound tracked down by Kramer. 78-53, 25-point game. A minute and a half to go now. Kramer slows up, gives it to Romig. Romig will use a skip pass to get it to Parker. Parker drives into the lane, off the backboard, and in. Her first point of the night. Open three and no good. So the Coyotes have gone cold once again from three point range, but it came after they went eight of nine. And now another turnover. Spear just wasn't taking care of the ball and had it stolen from her. Now Barrett just blows by Parker for the easy layup. And Coach Tate wants a quick timeout. So we'll take 30 seconds of our own. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO Sports. I'm Dr. Travis Stork, and welcome to Congestion Questions from Simply Sailing. Laura from Tampa, Florida asked, I get so confused in the cold aisle, what do I choose to help with this congestion? I use Arm & Hammer Simply Saline. It's a gentle mist that flushes away nasal congestion instantly with three simple ingredients, water, salt, and pure cleansing Arm & Hammer baking soda. And you can't beat that it's drug-free. Got a question? Ask it at congestionquestions.com and feel better simply. Simply Saline. And we're back in Salina where it's 80-55. to 55. Wesleyan has been on a mission here in the second half, scoring 58 second half points. Or, excuse me, 48 second half points. Forgot to carry a one there. But it's a 25-point lead, and the name of the game for Wesleyan has been three-pointers. They've hit eight of them here in the second half. And the name of the game for the Braves and the reason for the hole they're in has been 11 second-half turnovers. The other team's on fire, and you're not taking care of the ball. It's a recipe for disaster, and disaster is exactly what the Braves have faced here in the second half. Here's Hughes getting trapped. And that ball's going to go out of bounds. Throw into Wesley, and they're already up 25. 37 and a half seconds remaining in regulation. The pass in will be a full court press for the Braves. Wesley unable to break the press. They'll get it across the half court line and then slow it up. Passed over to Briley New. New gets it to Steinle. Steinle over to Jenna Ferris, who has a game high 27 points. Well, here's New driving the baseline, kicks it out to Mortensen, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. So the Braves will have just under seven seconds to try and get one last shot in, and then that'll be it. They'll drop to two and one in conference. Throw it in. Kramer is going to get the last shot. Throws it up. A floater in the lane is just off the rim. And our final score is going to be Kansas Wesley in 80. Ottawa Braves 55. So a rough second half translates into a the first loss of the KCAC season for the Braves who dropped to. 2-1 and one in the conference and 5-3 and three overall. The Coyotes improved to 5-4 and four overall and are now 2-1 and one in conference as well. You've been listening to OU Basketball here in Salina. We'll have the men's game and the men's pregame show here coming up here in about 10 or 11 minutes. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. At Twinings of London, we have black, green, and herbal teas that are perfect for any mood. There's jasmine green if you're feeling rushed. 
Lemon and ginger if you're worn down. Or berry fusion if you're feeling wild. No matter what flavor you pick, it's crafted with 300 years of expertise for the perfect balance of taste, flavor, and aroma. You have to like the sound of that. Twinings of London. Teas that fit your every mood. Travis Marvin is live at O-Town. It an occasion to remember as family, friends, and community come together in memory of Rob Hedges. Sunday, November 27th, 4 p.m. Enjoy food, fellowship, silent auction, door prizes, watch the Chiefs take on the Broncos on big screen, and Travis Marvin on stage at 128 South Main, downtown Ottawa. That's the way we roll. Work hard, get her done, party down, and have fun. To find out more, for donation information to help defray medical costs, please contact Jason Hedges, 785-418-8870 or KOFO Radio at 785-242-1220. Travis Marvin, live at O-Town, in honor of Rob Hedges, Sunday, November 27th, 4 p.m. I won't lie and say that I don't love you. From KCAC champions to winners in the first round of the NAIA National Tournament. Here's Courtney Jenkins with a shot, and it's in! The Ottawa Braves have just won, and they're advancing to the quarterfinals of the NAIA Tournament. The Ottawa University Lady Braves soccer team continues to make history. And the Ottawa Braves are going to advance for the first time in program history. KOFO will bring you OU Lady Braves soccer Tuesday, November 29th in the second round of the NAIA National Tournament. Good luck to the Lady Braves from KOFO. And welcome back to Salina, where the Braves end up losing to Kansas Wesleyan in the women's game, 80-55. to They were very much in it at halftime, although they'd had to come back from a 10-point deficit already. They fell down 22-12 to in the second quarter, went on an 11-0 run, regained the lead, went up 23-22, and then after a back-and-forth remainder of that second quarter, they were down just three, 32-29 at halftime, but one thing we were remarked on during the halftime show was how poor Wesleyan's three-point shooting was in that first half, going just one of 14 from behind the arc in the first half, and boy did things pick up in the second as they hit eight of their first 11 attempts from beyond the perimeter in the second half, and that helped them on their way to a 27-point third quarter where the Braves would turn it over six times in that third quarter and only score 11 points of their own. And so at that point, they dug on an almost impossible hole for themselves going into the fourth. Then outscored by six in the fourth quarter as the turnover problem just didn't go away. They turned it over another six times in the fourth quarter, resulting in a... Uh, in the end, they turned it over 21 times compared to Wesleyan's just eight. And you're just not going to win on the road in conference play turning it over 21 times to the other team's eight. So that was really the story of the game. We did have some good performances as Ashley Romig ended up with 15 points, 12 boards, and four blocks, but held on to the ball a little too loosely and a little too long a few times, turned it over six times. That's the only thing holding her game back because otherwise she was fantastic. Maddie Stewart did get her 14 points, but on 15 shots, so not an efficient 14, and she didn't struggle from the field. Even your stars are bound to have an off day here and there. And then Jenna Kramer was able to get into double digits as well with 11. But the story of the game was Kansas Wesleyan scoring duo of Jenna Ferris and Carly Steinle. Steinle had 17 points in the first half and another six in the second to go for 23 on the game. She also picked up nine rebounds to go with it. And then Jenna Ferris, 5 of 11 from three-point range after starting off 0 for 4. In the first half, scored a game-high 27, playing 35 minutes of basketball. And so, just a, kind of a perfect storm of everything that you can't do and we expect to win on the road for the Braves. Just one of those days, so they'll hope to they'll hope to rebound quickly. But that'll be that'll be it for now. We'll uh, bring you the Wise Guys Construction pregame show for the men's team in about six minutes here. But you've been listening to OU Basketball. That was the women's game, the men's game coming up here in just a little bit here on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM.
We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of Ottawa University Braves Basketball on KOFO. Brought to you by Modern Woodman Agent Dale Pearson, Dr. Hale Family Dentistry, Kansas State Bank, Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, the Ottawa Recreation Commission, and by State Farm Insurance Agent Ryan Dispro, Ransom Memorial Hospital, Sutton's Jewelry, Car Star, Messenger's Home Furnishings, also by Dingle & Sun Mortuary, Ottawa University, Eminent Sports Shop, The Ottawa Herald, Wise Guys Construction, Kramer Pharmacy, Franklin County Chiropractic, and Cosentino's Price Chopper, State Farm Insurance Agent Keith King, Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, and People's Bank. For more information about our next OU Brave Sports broadcast, log on to the KOFO Sports page at KOFO.com and listen to 103.7 FM for the KOFO Sports Calendar. This has been an exclusive presentation from your sports source for East Central Kansas, KOFO.